All right. Ralph of Primal Fear, welcome to 69 Face of Rock. How are you doing today? Thanks for having me. I'm doing fine. Thanks. How are you? Excellent. Um, new album, Code Red. Tell me about yes. the writing sessions for, for this record. Yeah. Good question. It started early. It started two years ago already, as we all know which period of time we went through. Everybody did with, with the pandemic. So we were really busy at that time writing. There's, there was nothing else to do. So we are very positive people and don't think about the negative stuff. Oh my God, we can't play live. So yeah, let's, let's uh, get our asses into the studio, write some songs. That's what we did. Everybody, not together, but everybody uh, in the band wrote. And uh, that's somehow the outcome now of the album. We had 20 songs together. And we picked uh, 11 of those, or which was going to, going to be in the album. And that's what happened. What conclusions were you reaching when writing those songs? Well, I mean, you know, conclusions, it's always, you're digging to find uh, somehow a theme to write about, but there's so much you can write about nowadays starting with cancer culture and, you know, combining reality with fiction sometimes is also pretty much for us uh, a thing to do, not to be too much obvious talking about the, the reality, but combining a little bit with uh, with own experiences and fiction, like I said, when you have songs like Steel Melt, for instance, this is pretty much like Chain Breaker from the new album, some, some, some alien from out there will come to try to destroy the world, but we stick together and fight, you know. And then you have those things like cancel culture, for instance, where we talk about being critical, how the society nowadays is having an unhealthy way of discussing with each other without respect, only seeing black and white and not really respecting each other anymore, which is, in our opinion, not a good development and started since the social media issues. And I think it's, we think it's not a healthy way to to be together as human beings in the future, to only do this on the social media channels. We have to find our way to really talk to each other again and with, with respect and somehow accepting other opinions, you know. So that's pretty much, it's, Critical on the album. That's the reason why the title is called Red, because the entire condition of the world, and not only the earth, but the, but also people, how they um, behave and how they are living together and not together is pretty much critical. And that's the reason why it sounds a little bit negative, but we have an opinion and we're happy to still have an opinion because in other countries, it's not even a possible to have an opinion anymore, right? <clears throat> Lyrically, it's more like you're sending out a warning. Maybe yes. If the people didn't realize by themselves so far, maybe they think about it. I mean, we, we never can change the world with music and with lyrics, of course. And I know many people are going to bitch about that and then that, but we have an opinion and we are able to tell it, you know. <laughs> grew up in the 70s and, and living the life you lived. Yeah. Uh, I Excuse me, I didn't get it acoustically. As, as someone who grew up in 1970s, and I know you yourself lived throughout that time as well, I could not agree more. Yeah, true. I mean, you know, it wasn't always, you know, it's always a, a certain way of having respect and somehow it was always not easy, but we made it because we were respecting each other, right? But nowadays, it's only like aggression, canceling, and witch hunt, and Jesus Christ, it's it's really a strange development, which I don't understand anymore. Yeah, I'm definitely having a hard time with that as well. Um, did you have a plan as to how you wanted this album to sound? Yes, because we had a great album before called Metal Commando. <laughs> And uh, of course, we didn't want to sound worse. <laughs> but but so they're going to develop themselves into, into a direction you didn't expect? Yeah, I mean, you know, we're the good thing we have, we have a six members writing team that starts with songs. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm always very positive about writing because I know there's many good, talented guys in the band who can write songs. And um, um, that was somehow 
really helping me when I thought, well, you got a really tough metal commando. And in the end, you you sit back sometimes and you really listen to it a hundred times. And then you're convinced when you hear the first feedbacks, friends, you send the songs, and wow, yeah, this is killer again, sounds better than that. You know, but in the end, we are, of course, sound-wise, at least wanted to sound the same, like Metal Commander or the albums before, because we are really happy with the sound so far. And everybody knows what he's doing in terms of uh, recording his own instruments nowadays. We are really very experienced musicians on that uh, on that topic as well. So, but when you send the stuff to Denmark to be mixed by Jacob Hans and, and you get a wall of sound coming back, it's nothing better can happen. <laughs> it's just great. Everybody was really happy listening to the really happy listening to the to the mixes in the end. One thing about the pandemic, as bad as it was, uh, there's one good thing that came out of it. Everyone's releasing amazing records because they had a lot of time to focus on the writing. I mean. You don't get any rush records anymore, which is a good thing. Yes, it's true. And it's really true. And and you see, musicians are positive thinking people because, I mean, there's only two options you can do in, in those times. You can weather stick your head into the sand and everything's shit. Or, no, okay, now I have time to write. So let's do this. <laughs> Certainly took advantage of that. Um, all right, so... Another Hero is the first single uh, from the record. Um, tell me about that song. Yeah, I mean, Tom came up with a great riff. I came up with the lyrics and the melody for it. And uh, lyrics are critical about who's coming from the space, helping us get along with each other again. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with, with the stuff which is going on in East Europe right now. That song was written before, so it's pretty much the entire situation who's who's coming and hits the fist on the table saying you can't do this anymore you have to you have to get along with each other <laughs> because if we're not able to do it someone has to do it right correct um cold red that's your 14th studio record what new things does it bring into the world of primal fear uh, new things every you know um, for me, I can speak for myself. I tried out so many things with my gear I bought for the album, uh, for the for my studio, and which are, really gave me the kick and inspiration to write songs. And, and that's the new thing for me. But for, for the band, it's just like the chemistry is like the writing team, six members with Magnus and everybody in the band, you know. So that was, and that still is a very, very big advantage for this band that everybody is talented in terms of writing. It's nothing new because we had it in Metal Commander. So we continue with an, uh, Code Red right now. And uh, I mean, there are songs like, for instance, The Gods Have Failed, which is an epic long track, for instance. You never heard that in a way, Primal Fear. There was long songs before, but long ballads and, and stuff. And this time it's pretty much a groovy, long song. And like we all know, we can't invent the wheel. It, it's there already. We only can bring our talents and our style together as a band. And that's always the new thing. If there's a new album coming out, it's always new because we do it in our unique way. And and within the band, I mean, again, after 14 records, how do you keep things interesting? You know, so they're exciting to you. Yeah, it's simply collecting ideas and saying no this is shit this is good you know but it's it's not like bashing or whatever it's a democratical decision we had 20 songs together i said this already and, and, and in the end there's 11 songs on the, on the on the album so those are our favorite songs we are picked from 20 and uh we keep it interesting in the band because those songs which didn't do it on the album are still good songs and maybe we're going to use it too so yeah Keep it interesting in the band is always for me, for instance, when I see Tom and Alex and Magnus playing the guitar and listening to it, this is this is great. <laughs> it's always interesting for me. Yeah. And I thought it's the same. I saw Michael playing the drums in the studio. And, and if you are part of the process, that's the interesting part behind it. Fantastic. Um, you still sound amazing. How do you Thank make you. it? You've been a performer for many, many years, even before 
Time of Fear came in, in, into being a band. Um, so what do you do? Yes, I did it. Uh, I started my first band, Voltage. I was 16. <laughs> so pretty much doing this 20, 40, 42 years. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to keep in shape and I'm really happy. I'm trying to keep in shape with the vocals to do my vocal exercises because I'm a teacher as well. I know what to do. But I'm also very lucky if you are doing exercises all the time and, and, and you're not somehow uh, naturally in a good condition, you can do whatever you want. Sometimes it's not easy when you get older at all because the tissue is changing, skin is changing, as we all know, the muscles are getting thinner also in the throat. So you have to do your exercises. And sometimes you had good days and sometimes you have uh, not so good days. It's absolutely, absolutely natural. So you pick the good days to record on an album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And after 42 years of being a performer, how yeah. do you look at the evolution of heavy metal around you? You know, we went through everything. We went through the 80s. We went through the 90s with crunch and everything. If you are, if you know what you want to do, you don't care what's happening around you. You just do your stuff, what you like. And you're lucky that you find fans will like it too. So there's always this healthy underground of music of, of heavy metal fans who love metal, heavy metal, you know. And it's not that small anymore if you if you see who's coming to festivals. So, you know, there's a lucky, there's a there's a healthy ground of people who were always love heavy metal. And that was that's always great, you know. But we never cared of trendy stuff in the 90s when grunge came up and so forth or whatever it was in the 80s, which is did our thing. And um, still now, there's so many branches of metal now, but we still like uh, the original 80s sound of metal. But without saying that we don't try things out, we are also open-minded to to, to uh, be experimental here and there. And personally, what are your some some highlights from those 42 years and all the bands that you did? All those big festivals like Wacken, for instance, are always highlights. I mean, it's just like being pushed into the cold water. Here you go, 100,000 people do your set. <laughs> that's always, that's the adrenaline, and that's great, you know, it's always the highlight. And uh, traveling the world is, is very, very um, exhausting for the body and for musicians at all, but in the end, you don't want to miss it, so... It's all a combination of things in the end, Mark. It's because you are, whenever you are on the road and you are somehow two months away, you want to say, I want to go home. And whenever you're at home, oh, I want to go on tour again. And whenever you're on the studio, I want to play live. Whenever you play live, I want to go back to the studio. It's always this. And this is the motor behind it to keep you going because you're always looking forward to the next step, right? Yeah. Um, and with all this technology, all of these possibilities now what is easier now than let's say back in 1980s you still have to be precise so it's easier you have your little tools to polish stuff but not in terms of because heavy metal is not pop music if i use artist tune you can tell that because my voice would would not work but it's always making this certain noises which is not um, working so you have your compressors, you have your good stuff, and really technology is good nowadays. But that's the reason why I'm so scared about this artificial intelligence, because it's, I don't want to be replaced by some somebody writing music without any human beings behind it anymore. And that's a good thing in our genre, where there's always human beings behind it. You have your little helpers, but you still... In the end, it's handcrafted music we do, right? And and still now, if you're recording, it's handcrafted. It's not some tool playing for you. It's you playing as a guitarist or me singing as a vocalist. And um, that's the advantage. And of course, it's easier because you know what to do with compressors. But we had that in the past too. We had where we we flew in choirs i remember with tape machines we recorded one qu big choir and we just pushed at the right time to jump in for the choir you can do that now digitally we did it also in, in, in the beginning of the 90s with with tape machines so it's just a little bit easier and and, and it's just uh sparing time in the end 
to make things quicker. And, and of course, you don't have to rent those expensive studios anymore. But when you are recording drums, it's still renting a studio because you're doing handcrafted music. That's right. Um, at this point, what would you say is the best market for Primal Fear? Market? Yeah. Everybody who wants to listen to, to, to heavy metal music, that's our market. And then all around the globe, that's a good thing. People listen to listening to Primal Fear in Japan, in South America, in North America, in Australia, in Europe. And we're really, really lucky people and, and happy people, yeah. Uh, I'm located in North America, and obviously I'm going to ask you the question, do you have any plans uh, for North America with this new album? We are talking about it, but Mark, um, it's not so easy, because whenever we, before we put one foot on American soil, we lost a lot of money in terms of having a lawyer, getting working visas, visiting the embassy, you know, we, we have to get social ID numbers to be able to work in America. And there's not even one dollar earned before we've spent so many dollars before. And of course, you have to negotiate because in the end, you don't want to come home being bankrupt. Right. And I understand that bands want to come to America and we have, we also will come back to America, but I don't know when, because this is another step, you know, so. And uh, it has to be worth it. It has to be a package in the end, which is working for the fans and for the bands. And um, just imagine what's going on there. We have to play, we will play in clubs where, where you have to also uh, pay city tax. We have to pay merchandise tax. We have to pay this, pay, 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 pay. Because we are experienced also in that term, uh, in that uh, topic that we came home with being almost bankrupt. So you have to be careful. Doesn't change. Doesn't change our our positive thinking about coming back. So because we want to play there, because we we love our fans, and I know they they love us too, and they don't sometimes don't understand what's behind all this. That it's difficult difficult to come, but we will do it because we love to play live. And I'm so glad you just explained this because I keep hearing this from a lot of bands and and. There are bands who try to go to Europe and face similar challenges as opposed to bands who are trying to come to America and, and face exactly what you just told me. It's uh as so for to come to Europe, it's easier for American bands. They don't need working visas, they just go to the to the customs and say, Hello, here I am, and do a show. <laughs> it's not so easy for us. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's so much behind the scenes. Um mm -hmm. right, so finally. At this point, what else is there for you to achieve? What goals do you have? Next step. <laughs> so we are planning to go on tour in September now in Europe. At least 10 shows, which is not much. But we said, said let's take it easy this year and, and uh, somehow extend next year. We're also coming to South America. And uh, we're going back to Japan in, in February next year, and then we are extending stuff with uh, negotiations right now. It's too early to talk about. There's going to be a huge longer tour then, and we also do festivals next year. So that's what I said before. We always uh, keep alternating between live and studio, live and studio, which uh, keeps us going. Thank you so much, Ralph, for speaking with me, and good luck with the new album, and, and hope we can see you here in America. Thanks, Mark, for having me. Cheers. Bye-bye. Have a good